Check it out. My new 3D printer. I've been wanting a printer to travel with me. Something small, something simple. And I've been shopping around and then I found this one. The Fabricator. Under $200. Fully assembled. And it's been getting pretty good reviews. So, I figured I'd give you guys a first hand look at my Fabricator Mini. All right, so let's start by opening the box. It's got a little manual, printed manual, and also some blue painter's tape to go on the bed. Now, just to show you how big this thing is before I even open it, I actually printed a block before it got here. This is the build area, so it's not big, but it's not ridiculously small either. So. We'll see how useful that is. They uh, gave me a small sample, extremely small sample of filament. Now it is a PLA only printer, so this is black PLA. It's packed really nice with some foam. Has a USB cable. Looks like a power supply. Wow, is this thing small? <laughs> oh, look at this thing, fully assembled. Tiny printer. Man, this would probably fit inside of DaVinci. <laughs> Look at that. It fits right inside. Look at this. It even comes with blue painter's tape on the bed already. This is, this is incredible. It's even got a, an E3D. It's hard to see it here. It's got an E3D hot end. It's probably a clone, I'm pretty sure it's a clone, just to keep the price down. And then the motherboard is an MKS base version 1, 1.3. And that's an open source board, if I remember right. This board, when I read about it, it actually can control two extruders. It's got all the features, including it's got connectors for adding an SD card and an LCD display, which I'm going to add at some point. But this thing is solid. I'm flipping this around and it's it's not even budging. It's not flexing. Man, this is pretty nice. I wonder how well it prints though. So. It's on a Bowden tube because the extruder is in the back here. And somehow I gotta get that guy up and attach him to the back. Two screws into place. So now per the manual, I have to connect the USB cable here to the bottom and bring it out the slot at the back of the printer. Then I have to connect power to the power port from the power supply and then connect the power cable to the power supply and we're ready to go. So the next step in the manual is to install the Repetier software. Repetier is a software that actually controls the printer. It's the same software I use to control my reflashed DaVinci back here. It's really just a matter of downloading it and installing that and then you have to set up the printer and then you have to set up the slicer, in this case Cura. So I've already installed Repetier. There's not much to show you. You just download it and install it. But the print settings is critical to getting the thing work, to work right. And they do a great job of stepping you through screen by screen. So I'm going to show you that, show you the setup here, and then we'll go into the, the Cura slicer. So there's four tabs that you have to set up. First the connection tab shown here. And then there's a printer tab with both a top and bottom section. The bottom section is where you set the park position and this is where it'll go after the job is done. Then there's the extruder section. You tell it one extruder, the maximum temperatures. And at the bottom you tell it the diameter which is a 0.4 extruder. And then finally the printer shape. This is where you tell it's an 80 by 80 by 80 build area. Okay so now we've got that set up and the final step is to set up the Cura slicer and then of course connect it all up and get a first print to go. The beauty of this is they've already got a file created for Cura with all the settings that they recommend for you know, this machine and all you do is you download the file and you load it in and it handles all the setup. So to load the file, I first had to go into the Cura configuration settings 
and then under that there was a filament tab as you can see here. Under the filament tab there's a save, save as, delete, import, and export. I clicked on the import and a window popped up so I can go and find the file that had all the settings. Now you need to have this on your computer before you do this step, but all I did was highlight it, clicked open, and then all the Cura settings were automatically put in place to work with this printer. If you can't find the file, they step by step you through the screens and the manual, so, so they cover you both ways. This is really well done. So I connected it up to the computer, it took a few minutes for the USB to uh, negotiate whatever it did. It says in the manual, give it a couple minutes, and it's right. It just needed to, to load whatever, recognize whatever drivers. So the first thing I did was hit the home button to home the hot end to the bed. And when I tried to slide a piece of paper underneath, it wouldn't fit. So I have to adjust this screw, which really just adjusts the stop point for the Z-axis. So I adjusted that got a piece of paper to slide underneath it, then I checked it at multiple points across the bed just to see how flat this bed was. And it turned out pretty flat, pretty level, so it worked. So finally I just moved it all the way back to the home position again, checked it one more time, and everything looked good. The paper slid right underneath it multiple times, and I was ready to start my first print. But first you had to load the plastic, the filament that came with it. You just press on the, the lever and then slide it in through the Bowden tube. And you keep doing this until you get to the hot end. Now, you, can, you have to click on the button in Repetier to start the hot end from heating to heat up. And once you've got that, then you can manually push the filament through and see the filament come out of the hot end. Then you know everything's working, so it's ready to print. Now, they don't really give you a specific file to print, so I printed my little chess pawn. That's my test print for most printers. And it was printing just fine. So then I put it in a time lapse mode so I could watch it. But about midway through, the plastic ran out. It didn't have enough to push through the extruder. So I had to put extra plastic in there, but I was too late. There's a, a gap right in the middle of the pawn. But it came out really good. Very, very smooth. Here's, here's a picture of it next to the uh, best print I could get out of my stock Da Vinci. Now the stock Da Vinci was ABS and on the right on the fabricator was PLA. But the lines are much smoother, and they're both printed at 0.2 layer height. So it's not the exact same plastic, but um, I'm really pleased with the results. Everything looks smoother. Even the ball is round. So it was a great print. So overall, I am really happy with this purchase. This is even more than what I expected for the money. It's a great uh, printer. It's got great components, and it prints really, really well. In fact, not only did I print that pawn, I printed replacement feet, which are recommended. They just go on the bottom, and I printed all four of them on the build platform. It was big enough for it. And all they do is they lift the, the printer up so air can get underneath to the electronics and cool it off. I also printed the bearing, the same bearing design that I printed several videos ago on the Da Vinci Junior when I was evaluating that printer. It printed this single print perfectly fine. Just as good, if not maybe a little bit better than what I got out of the Da Vinci. And it's half the price. So people have asked me, what's a great first time printer? Are you just getting started? I think this is an excellent choice. Under $200, so you're not investing a ton of money to get used to or familiar with 3D printing to see if you even like it. The manual that they give you, the color printed manual, steps you through everything. Very well done. They give you extra tape for the bed. They give you a little bit of filament to print something. Everything is there and fully assembled. It's not a kit. You don't have to build it. And it's just, that's awesome to me because a lot of people say, you know, get a kit and that way you learn all about 3D printing and how it works. And yeah, but if you don't do it right, and you can't get that first print to work right or it comes out crappy, you may be turned off to 3D printing all because the kit didn't go together right. So to me, I believe in, in get a fully assembled, but open source if preferred, so you can modify it down the road. And that's what this is. So this to me is what I recommend for beginners. In fact, I'm looking at changing my book or coming out with an updated version of my book to feature this instead of the Da Vinci's because the closed source and all the crap they've done with 
blocking cartridges. I, you know, I, I'm done with them. I, I just I, they've pissed me off. So, um, I'll still use my printers, but I, for as far as beginners and just getting started, I really think this is an excellent printer. I really do. I'm gonna play with it some more. Now, there's a few things. If anybody's listening out there who, you know, builds these or sells them, there's a few things I would recommend they do. Number one, make the USB cable longer. My USB comes to the back of my computer and it's just it's just not long enough. Number two, why do I have to print these feet? You could have just cut out feet out of the you know the acrylic and still left a gap for the electronics. So to me that's an easy design change and fix. Um, and third, give me more plastic when you ship the thing. When I printed that pawn, you know, that center of that pawn, it didn't run out of plastic. It had plastic in the in the Bowden tube, but there was not enough plastic to push through the extruder to push it through the hot end. So I had to add plastic to, to finish that, and I didn't get there in time, so I got a little um, gap where it was kind of barely printing plastic. So put more plastic in it. And the final thing, actually, is one more thing. When you get to the end of the book, the manual it says okay you got it set up you're ready to do your first print what print they don't give you a sample print they should give you a small little sample print file that you can download from their site or whatever that matches the amount of filament that they give you but like I said give me more filament so that you know it's got enough to push it so that's why I ended up doing my pawn I mean make the pawn the one I, it's fine with me just add more plastic so you get enough to do the pawn so those are the only improvements I would recommend but those are all minor and easy to do and I'll probably be printing more with this than I will my big ones for a while just because it's so much fun and easy to haul around and it's just it's just everything I was looking for if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you like my channel please subscribe that way I know you're watching and if you want to help support this channel with things like this and helping you learn more about what you know what's out there as far as 3d printers contribute my uh, Patreon account, dollar a month helps a lot. So thanks again. I'll see you next time. After I got this video all done and ready to upload, I went back and double checked the price and was shocked to find out they had just raised the price. I paid $179. It's already up to $215. So getting a printer like this, this good for under $200 is kind of a dream come true. So I hope it comes back down, but I just wanted to give you guys an update. It's not under $200 anymore.